all right so welcome back again my name is jesse and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial we're trying to see how to do load testing for a web application specifically we're trying to see how to do load testing for streamlit apps right okay it's going to be very very basic so load testing is a situation in which you build a web application it can be flux it can be streamlit express node.js django and then you want to know how many how performant your app is going to be what is going to be the response time when it is used by not just one user or three users but multiple users at the same time right so in case you are designing your app or developing your app you the developer here you may have no idea of how many people will be using your app right so how do you simulate the occurrence of multiple users right on your app to see how performant your app is going to be so there are several tools you can use so some of them include jmeter which is javascript we have which is java we have cases we have locust and then these are the rest but in this wonderful tutorial we're trying to see how to work with locust right perfect so load testing simply means that you're trying to test the performance and the response time of a web application when being used by multiple concurrent users not just one user but multiple users so let's see how to do that so we're going to design a simple app we stream it and we're going to see how to use locals to do load testing on it so i'll just go back again to my workspace here and this is my app right so i'm going to open this particular app so sublime this, this is the app that you're working on it's a very simple basic app which is having the home page and about page and some simple data frame that you can download so let's run the app so stream it run app.py perfect so how do you simulate not just one user but multiple users on your app so that's what we're trying to do so one simple shout out i have some courses that you can also check out in case you are fan of streamlit so you can check this app on this course on udemy so learn streamlit right it's a very very exciting course right which you can check out how to create beautiful data apps of course the other materials you can also check you can also check them out also there's also a very nice book by tyler right tyler richards on getting started with streamlit for data science which i'll place a link below that you can also check and then explore more about streamlit okay so let's go back too much of the shouts out let's go back again to the app right so the app is already opening i'm going to open this particular app my streamlit app go back to my browser let's use this particular place and let's take off this right so this is the app right the app is working perfectly so how do you do load testing for this simple app that you have built so this is a simple app so in case i pass 10 here and i'm going to automatically generate 100 random values as you can see i can actually download it as a csv right see there's a result being downloaded okay so let's do load so let's do load testing on this simple app, right? So to do simple load testing, I just go back again to the place that I was working. This is the app. I'm going to create another file. I'm going to call this particular file as my load test app, right? So the same place that I have. Let's call it as locust file. You can give it any name. So locust file.py. And then you need to be able to work. In order to be able to work with locust, you have to install it. So I just go back again here. And I'm going to install it. So Locust is a Python file, Python package so pip install Locust in case you don't have it on your system. So this is how to install it on your system. Perfect. If I check it out, we have my Locust file here. There's nothing there. So I'll come back again. Then I'm just going to import it. So from Locust, import. These are the most important things. So we have HTTP user. This is very, very important, which is going to be used to simulate your users. We also have our tax. It's going to tell us which endpoint to run and we also have our between so the between is going to tell us how many times you should wait between users right very simple then let's create the simplest way just create a simple class it can be any name so i can call it as my app user right or can be app start user app user right and this is going to inherit from the http user so http user right so this is very very important so this is going to inherit from the http user which I'm extending. I'm going to specify the wait time. So I'm using the between. So wait between the users, let's say two or two to let's say five seconds, right? Perfect. Then I'm going to specify what I want to do. So this is going to be my tax. So the creator. And I'm going to give it any. I'm going to give it a function, which is going to be the endpoint. So this is going to be like the endpoint. 
endpoint that I want to test, right? So there's, your app can have several endpoints or several parts of the app. So let's give it my home page, right? Then I'm going to inherit self. Then I'm going to say that, okay, self.client. This is very important. So this self.client is coming from this HTTP user, right? Very simple. Then I'm just going to go with the endpoint. So it can be get, it can be post, in case you are doing post, it can be put, in case you are doing a put. All the HTTP methods are available. Okay, I'm going to specify the endpoint. So the endpoint is this particular endpoint one. Then that is the main endpoint. Perfect, that is all, right? These streamlets, you are doing something very basic. Perfect. That is all that we need. So now let's see how to run it. So make sure that your app is also running. So my Streamlit app is running, as you can see here. And then I also want to be able to run my Locust file. So the simplest way is just go with this. So Locust, which is there. So Locust dash F, then the name of the file, Locust.py file. So by default, if I run it, it's going to open a local port for us, which is this particular port. I'll copy this come back again to my browser, making sure that the old app is working. I'll put it here, 8089, right? Go to open my load cost GUI, right? Now this is the number of users, only one. So I can specify, let's say I want to just get 10 concurrent users. Then I must specify the span rate, you can leave it like that, and the host. So this is very important. So this is going to be the host URL, which is this particular URL here that is running, right? So I'll copy this, streamlet, and I'll paste it here, right? Make sure that there's no backslash. If there's a backslash, that means that's going to give us field, right? So perfect. Now let's start swarming. So it's going to start with what? 10 concurrent users. So as you can see, so it's four, five, and then like that, right? So this is going to be the statistics, the request, the percentile, the average response time, and the minimum response time. If there are fails, you're going to see the fails here. If I go back to the chat, it is very important with the chat, you can see the app running right so the total request per second the pink one is the fields there are no fields as you can see there are no fields and the response time is that it is working perfectly well if i scroll down we have our response time right and the number of users so we started from zero then we went to 10 here so as the number of users are still 10 you can see that our response time is still the same the median response time is still the same right it's not showing any lag within the performance right the percentile is also going up and down but the response time is still the same right if it's 10 i can come back in let's bring this one down let me close let me shut myself down i can stop it and i can also edit a certain new test right new test let's change the number of users 200 and start again now this is going to be 100 users right so it's not going to start from 13 years as you can see it's going to 16 it's going to move from that place to 100 right so as it's running as the number of users are increasing we are checking the response time right and it's still, still still the same thing as the number is increasing the median response time is still the same so our app is actually performant right it's not lagging behind right there's a slice percentile increase and down going up and down but the green one the median response time is almost the same and that our app is responding well. So just move from 10 to 100 and the app is moving on well, right? There are no failures in our app. Everything is moving on well perfectly. So that is how to work with it. So after that, you can actually come back again and check if there are failures. There are no failures. You can also check if there are exceptions. There are no exceptions. And you can also download the data here as a CSV file as you wish or download the report. In case you don't want it, you can just stop it here. And you can start a new test that is how to do load testing for your streamlet app right for now that is the basic way now this the other alternative is just go back again this is the first alternative using this option here the next alternative is that you can also specify the number of users from from the beginning so let's get out of this place the app is still running right and in case i want to specify the number of users I can just go with locust dash f then the name of the file then I'll specify the host. So the host is going to be the host of the streamlet that is running, which is this app here. I'll copy this as my host, right? And I can also specify the number of users. So let's reduce it, right? So let's specify the number of users, like let's say 200 users at the same time. Then I can also specify the span rate. Span rate, 
which can be let's say two right or you can just leave the span width without specifying it any of them is going to work so if i run it like that it's also to, automatically going to pick this particular file and open this particular host right so the same endpoint 8089 come back it's already opening so you see that by default you have a number of users 200 the span rate this and then the host right so this is what we specified here right perfect that's another way of also working on it if i come back here and i start swarming it's going to generate 200 users from from scratch is the number of requests being made there are no fails as you can see if i go back to the chat sorry for it being small but this is the number of users there are no fields the response time is going up there are no fields then you can see that the number of users started from zero it just went up to nine users it's going up it's going up right so as it's going up the response time is still the same it's not lagging behind right although the median percentile is increasing up which is how it's supposed to be but the response time is still the same right this is very important right if this one changes moves and that means that the app is losing its performance right very very cool perfect so thank you for watching this tutorial in case you have any question or contribution you can just put inside the comment section below let's try and see how to work with the failure right i'm going to try and stop it and let's see how the failures work so i'll go back to new test i'm going to actually make a mistake here put backslash here start right and let's see so i'm going to start it if the etc now automatically have a failure because it's not getting this particular endpoint right that is why it's giving us this particular failure so if i go back to the chat you can see that there is a failure here so in case there is a failure at the end point you're able to see it inside the chat or inside our failures option here right very simple this is a self-generated failure right so thank you for watching this tutorial in case you have any question or contribution you can also put inside the comment section below and then check the link below for some interesting materials on streamlit and check tyler's book on getting started with streamlit as well as some of the courses on Udemy, learn streamlit python and of course the other courses is having a lot of courses you can also check all of these things there so thank you see you another time stay blessed